Let's further discuss this now with Tom Gross, who is a Middle East analyst, and he joins me now live from Tel Aviv. Thank you so much, sir, for being with us on the program. Now, Netanyahu has been uh, taking measures against Palestinian attackers and their families, as we mentioned, but there are worries that this will make room to target innocent Palestinians as well. What are your thoughts? Well, Israel is not uh, trying to target innocent Palestinians as much as possible, both for moral reasons, but also because it will be very counterproductive and Israel definitely, definitely does not want to spark a uh, uprising or intifada, which it might do if it sort of started uh, targeting civilians. In the raid in Janine last week, there was one uh, woman, Palestinian woman, uh, killed, but she wasn't the target. That was an unfortunate uh, side product. All the other people killed belonged to Islamic Jihad and Hamas, and Israel says that they were in the midst of planning an, a major terror attack, which is why Israel went into Janine to take that action. Right, and there's rising concern on the overall security situation in the occupied territories. Apart from the escalation of violence that we've seen in the last couple of days, there are 200 Palestinians that face forced eviction from their homes in the Bedouin village of Khan al-Ahmar. It seems like the situation is going to go from bad to worse. Well, yes. Um, the Israeli government would say that they're on a, they've done a legal building, and uh, they would point out they've also removed some uh, Israeli Jews from illegally built homes um, a few days ago too, and they're not targeting in particular Bedouin or Palestinians. But obviously there's such a mistrust between the sides that from a Palestinian point of view, it looks like uh, they are targeting Palestinian uh, or Bedouin families in particular, and it doesn't look good. Um, as we know, Secretary of State, American Secretary of State Blinken is going to arrive in Tel Aviv, in Israel, in the next few hours. And certainly uh, both sides are looking for the United States to try and revive some kind of peace process because there have be, has been hardly any movement on Israeli-Palestinian peace for several years now. What do you make um, of the right? What do you make of the Biden administration's stance uh, on this whole situation? Do you think that they could do more in making the two-state solution a reality, uh, in saying that they might start a peace process during Blinken's visit? Well, they can only work with what the party, you know, with the parties as far as the parties want to make peace. So we have a new, a new government in Israel that, that took office a few weeks ago, which is a right wing government. And certainly there are those within that government who do not believe in a two state solution. Uh, some of the government do and some don't. But uh, it's a coalition government and there, there'll be opposition uh, um, from the Israeli government to try and create a Palestinian state. On the Palestinian side, you have Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian president. He was elected in 2004 to a four-year term, but he's never held further elections. It's now 19 years. During these 19 years, there have been, I think, five different Israeli prime ministers, Ariel Sharon, Ehud Olmert, Netanyahu, um, uh, Naftali Bennett, mm -hmm. and... Uh, uh, Yair Lapid. So Israel says, look, we, we've tried many times to, uh, to negotiate, sometimes more, sometimes less, under successive Israeli governments, and Abbas d either is, doesn't want to or maybe he's incapable of negotiations. Mm -hmm. He's 88, and a lot of people on the Palestinian as well as the Israeli side are kind of waiting for him to leave office either because he's too old or maybe he'll pass away. And they're waiting for a much younger, newer Palestinian leader. I think that is a key factor. Until that happens, I don't think we're about to see some uh, big headway on Israeli-Palestinian peace. Okay, Tom Gross, thank you so much for joining us here on the News Hour and sharing that analysis with us. Thank you.